Okay, so for some reason, I'm going to record myself hand wiring the operator or the little foot. It, the more I mess with it, the more I mess with it, the more fun I have with it. And this thing got to fly. So, uh, start with the diodes. It's always first. Uh, the, these are neat to have. You just have to make them <laughs> or take them off of another board where you already made them. Uh, they're just diodes that are hooked and kind of ready to be set onto these, uh, these points. So you can just drop it right here and then hook the next one and the next one, next one, next one, next one, all down the line. And it works really well. Uh, the only thing is I took this off of the blank, which I absorbed for making this. And uh, <clears throat> it's not quite as long. So we'll start out with this and then I'll do some actual kind of freehand stuff. Uh, actually, let's start with the freehand stuff. That's probably more useful to people. So we're going to start. All, you, all we're doing is connecting a row of diodes, oh, almost exactly like this. Uh, connecting the diodes so that there's a line across the top, and then a diode between the line and the switch post. So very simple hand wiring process. So we'll start with some free wire. So we're over here. Start here. Always make sure your diodes are pointing black side down or toward the switch. Uh, actually, you can do them the other way. It doesn't matter. But this is kind of the standard, I think. It's the default for most layout or most uh, systems. So eh, it's not a huge deal. Actually, I'm going to need to start over here and then go backwards. So that covers this many keys. Yeah. So we'll start here. We'll just do this one real quick. Uh, it's good to have a, it's always nice to have a good tension hold. And I'm sorry if I can't do this for a Cherry MX because right now these are just Alps. So they have a different layout uh, or post orientation. So let me just get this in place. There we go. So the diode is held in place right now by just kind of a friction hold. So it's there and I'm going to mount or I'm going to place my solder joint right here. Right. This is shinier here. So, looks like we've got a good joint there. I can just pull, fold this straight up and leave it there for to wait for the next thingy. Oh yeah. Start a stopwatch so I can check along the way. Make sure we're still recording because my camera dies after like 30 minutes. And my dikes are elsewhere. So, been a good show. I uh, hope you all enjoyed it. All right, we are diking. Snipping off the excess, the right of the switch. Slightly magnetic for some reason. So there we've got diode mounted black on the bottom. And we would repeat that for this whole row here. Uh, by the way, if you don't have one of these, highly, highly, highly recommended. 
it's a uh, maiden radio or maiden radio shack. <laughs> it comes with a radio shack soldering kit, and it's called a solder a soldering helper. I think you can find them by googling soldering helper. But these the solder doesn't adhere to them. They're strong. They're very heat resistant, and they just you can keep your fing you can keep pressure where it needs to be, without your fingers being so dangerously close to all the danger. So, actually one of the cool things about this is when you get these made, you can just kind of hook on there. And I'm holding pretty far away from everything. There we go. So look at that. We're soldered on. It's a good joint. And we've got all these diodes just hanging out here. And all you got to do for the next one, hook it right there. Got to make the noise, otherwise it doesn't work, and it still bends. Actually, it still worked. There we go. That's two. That's three. Four. Five. Six. And on, and on, come on, here we go. Uh, my reason for the, doing this one is kind of twofold. Uh, going to the Nashville keyboard meetup, which was a wonderful thing to explain to my friends and family. Uh, she was mostly just family. Going to a place to talk to people about keyboards. A meetup for keyboard enthusiasts. And it's a three hour drive. So, oh, um, what I did there, I just used two posts to bend this diode. I put one where I wanted the bend to be and just pulled it to the right. And so I've got this, uh, got this kind of lever action going on here. These are not touching. But since this one is kind of, I hope you can see this, hovering above the other one, all we do now is flip it behind. And now it has kind of spring tension pushing up and making that contact so that we don't have to sit there and apply pressure to it constantly. So now I've got two hands to do this. Don't get on me about fume extractors. I have a fan on. And I still need one. So I'm just pushing these down along the line. So the best way to do these in long runs, well, obviously, it's these. But the uh, best way to do these, freeform. Touch the soldering iron. Burns last a very long time. Uh, I've found with Alps or Matthias, whatever you're using, or whatever has this same post orientation. Uh, what I mean by post orientation is these uh, the posts are right next to each something a little more visible. Uh, yeah. Gun stick. These posts are right next to each other. On Cherry or MX style, there's a post here, post here, or post here, and a post here. So they're kind of off kilter. So you can't use the same friction holds. So I'm not really showing that. Uh, but what I can do, show you the friction holds for these. When you do do these, do do, just skip one, do the friction mount, and skip one switch at a time. That was really the wrong way of doing that. And again, the black side is pointing toward the switch. So this kind of extends past and touches here as kind of a spring action. So I'm just skipping this switch going on to this one. I'm just getting that uh, 
that spring tension to hold things in place. And then when I'm done, when I get these three, I'll trim them and do the two in the middle. So that's just the three. They're sitting there using just spring tension. That one's a little wobbly, but it's still in place. It's making contact. The other two are a bit better. Come on. And then, again, two hands free. We're not using helping hands. We're not doing any of that weird stuff. I, I can't do the helping hands. It, it doesn't work with me. I don't know why. I wish it could. <laughs> that one is a bad joint. So I'm just going to lift it up. <laughs> also a bad joint. And now I'm just going to hold it and show that this method does not work and you shouldn't use it. This actually seems like... Okay, this might not have been... That lead might not have been very clean. But hopefully your leads are a bit cleaner. If you run into this situation, it's always nice. And especially when you're doing these, these strips, um, it's a lot easier with new switches to just tin each one. Just go down the line tinning because everything just runs much more smoothly when you tin. So I've got this. Uh, this is, I guess, a non-friction hold. Holding it, again, the black side is going to point toward the switch. Just gonna touch it there. It's already pre-tinned on the switch, uh, the diode itself. So now yeah, we've got a good mount. So back to the method that I said that worked and didn't work. Get away. Heating both elements. This is, this is not a soldering tutorial, but it could be. Just a really bad one. There we go. So once we're sure we've got good joints, take our dikes and cut off the excess. Ta da! Still slightly magnetic. Somehow that didn't go away in the preceding three minutes. And then we just point them up. All right, now they're up and out of the way. And we can do the, the two in the middle. Then just kind of doing a friction mount here. That is 10 minutes. There we go. Friction mount, holding things in place. Heating both elements. <laughs> That's a good one. It took me <laughs> forever to learn how to solder. Forever. I just, I don't know, it was like electrical engineering with me. It took forever. I learned just about anything, just about as quick as I like. But electrical engineering and soldering were those two things that just would not, would not get through. It took a very long time. I'm still not that great at electrical engineering either, so take that for what it's worth. Um... So I remember to keep these up a little bit, so they're kind of raised off so they don't get in your way as you work your way down. Um, but we're just going to do some connections real quick. Uh, so we've got, this is kind of the best way I've found so far. These are pointing up. This is our pivot point. We want it to turn within the switch, within the area of the switch. This is the, the turn we're trying to achieve. And again, we're this is over top the next one. And we want that because we're going to slip it behind the next one. And now there's spring tension pushing up and making that contact point that we're going to need to make this joint. I might even want to adjust that, maybe a little lower. I'm just applying a little bit of pressure, 
loosen the solder. Solder helper. Soldering helper. Definitely, definitely get some. So now we've got this in place. And now that I've mounted here, here, and here, I've got three points. I can really easily just take my finger and go whoop, next one. And bend down far enough. I've done, well, I, I, I say I do a lot, but I guess compared to most people, a lot of hand wiring. And this has figured to be the best way to do these rows that are oh so annoying. See, on this one, I've gone a little low. And the bottom lead is actually not touching. It doesn't have that spring tension. I should have brought it above and then slipped it below, but it's below, so I'm just going to flop or flip, flip or flop, whatever, this one to the other side and get that tension back. So that was, I don't know how many seconds, but four switches. Just getting that first one mounted, and with these, once you get them mounted at that one point on the switch, they're a lot easier to work with. Just so much easier to work with. Uh, now, I'm not going to do you the disservice of... There we go, make that a little lower. I'm not going to do you the disservice of making you watch me do this entire thing unless you really want me to. Which, I won't know because by the time I publish whatever, internet. But I do want to show you how I do columns and the method I use for that, which is this one. So columns are super annoying. If you've never made these before, you are very lucky uh, because this is annoying work. Very annoying. More annoying than the diodes, I think. So, the best way I've found to do it is to take um, single core wire. And if you don't have single core wire, you can always use a multi core. Multi pass. Oh, there they are. I had them out. So got a little extra um, multi core wire to 15 minutes. We'll just make sure we're recording real quick.